If you watched my video from a couple of weeks ago, you'll have seen that I'm pretty excited to start my Kill Team journey with a new Kill Team Optarius box set. There's one team in particular from the box that I've been really eager to get my hands on. No, not those filthy wretched orcs, but everyone's favourite trench and shovel enthusiasts, the Death Corps of Krieg. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this 10 miniature sprue and got so much more value from it. I'm Benji and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. To me, Krieg have always felt slightly inaccessible. Essentially, they've been a mostly Forge World based army, and of course, with Forge World comes a higher price tag compared to plastic models. Now, of course, value is very subjective, and what might be worth it to someone might not be worth it to someone else. And to me, I've never felt like I could really justify investing in them. That is until now with a new plastic kill team kit. As with so many of the newer Games Workshop sets, these ones come absolutely packed with options, and from looking through the instruction leaflet, there are multiple ways to build them which is absolutely fantastic. I love that you can get different options, specialisations, and different poses for the various miniatures in the kit. Out of the box, this kit makes 10 unique operatives for your kill team. However, it does mean that you'll have to forego some of the poses, unless you decide to pick up multiple boxes. This kit was pretty easy to build, and if you're anything like me and enjoy building miniatures, then you'll have no issue in putting them together. As I was assembling each model, I personally went with Rule of Cool. To me, the painting and hobby aspect is more important than having the most optimised weapon loadout, so I just assembled what I thought was the coolest looking option on the instructions. With my 10 Kriegy boys assembled and feeling pretty happy with my built models, I turned my attention to the rest of the bits on the sprue. Now don't get me wrong, I love having different weapon and accessory options in miniature kits. It allows for a huge level of customization and flexibility that would otherwise not be possible and you're essentially left with monopose models. On the other hand, I absolutely hate having loads of leftover bits that I can't use. While certain bits might find a use elsewhere in conversions or as trinkets and decoration on terrain pieces, I know that most of these bits will probably never see the light of day again once they get sorted into the bits box. It just feels really wasteful to me. It's a really tough one because on one hand I love having the options, but then I don't want to waste bits. I don't know what the solution is. And then it struck me. I was reminded about Ollie from Broadsword Wargaming's video where he built and painted his own Krieg team. He used some extra bodies from the Forge World Krieg models to add some variety to his kill team, and I thought, why not do something similar? But instead of using Forge World parts, I could use 3D printed parts instead. After a quick search on some of the more common STL and 3D printing sites, I found some extra bodies to expand my Krieg team and make the kit go that little bit further. There were four slight variations of the bodies I found, so I loaded them onto Chitu Box and feeling a bit ambitious, added 10 to be printed and set the printer going. Thankfully, they all came out looking pretty good and after a bit of cleaning in isopropyl and removing the supports, they're ready for me to stick the rest of the bits onto. Now, side by side, there is a bit of difference between the originals and my 3D printed versions. They're a little bit softer and lack a bit of detail, which you might be down to the limitations of my own printer rather than quality of the files, but without a better printer, I'm not able to test that out. I used some super glue to stick the extra arms and parts on the models, roughly following the instructions for a few, but eventually just winging it and trying out different arm combinations to see what fits and see what looks pretty cool. In most cases, the arm options fit pretty well, but some do need a bit of slight modification to get them to fit right. But this was easily done by scraping away some material to change the mini stance. After a bit of fiddling about with the poses and a lot of super glue and activator, I ended up with a whole extra 10 Death Corpse models, which is twice what came in the kit, for only a minimal amount of extra work and a fraction of extra cost. It also means that I've managed to build myself all the specialist options that are available on the sprue, so I won't be left behind if I didn't build the most optimised option first time round. Once they're all built, I give them a quick prime and in all honesty, I'm finding it difficult to tell which ones are the original ones and which are the 3D printed ones, especially from across the table. 
With a few licks of paint, they're even more difficult to differentiate, and I'm really happy with how they've turned out. Once I get some time to paint the rest of the group up, they'll be on the table and ready to dig some trenches and take the fight to those dirty orcs. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, then make sure you click that subscribe button. If you want to support me in any way, you can go and check out my Patreon program or simply click my Element Games affiliate link and buy yourself some new toys. Every purchase you make after clicking that link gives me a little kickback, which really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Hang on, is it Deathcore or Death Corpse? I d Will you tell me?